<laughs> Hi, Karen. How are you doing? Great can, to see you. Can you hear me? Great to see you. Yeah, we can hear you. We can all hear you. It's great. So uh, I was going to say welcome to Pass, but I actually say welcome to your house. Uh, and good morning, because you're in Los Angeles. I am. I'm in LA. As I just went <laughs> my breakfast. And now oh, I'm in good. a really dark room. I'm sorry. This is really badly lit. Oh, well, that's shocking. We're disappointed, all of us. Very upset. Hugely upset about that. So, listen, we've got loads of questions. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just going to start with one question, and then I'm going to try and we're going to go get through everybody's questions in the 90 minutes we've got. So, just how is lockdown for you in Los Angeles? That's the first and the only question I'm going to ask. Um, it's, you know, I, I'm going slightly stir crazy a little bit um but weirdly so like uh, the whole industry is basically shut down in terms of filming things however the one thing that people can still work on is development and so there's a lot of action on that side and um, so if you're like a writer or a director you can sort of keep working a lot and so it's been weirdly busy in that respect but no acting none at all Nothing. Um, I was meant to do two films this year. One of them's definitely been moved to next year. I don't know about the other one because it's a smaller indie film, so maybe they might be able to do it later this year. We're not sure. Oh, that's, that's crazy. So listen, I'm sorry, so, sorry to hear that, but I, I know that you're working on stuff. When I spoke to you, you said you're still working on writing stuff. Yeah. So our first question it goes to uh, Jack from uh, Tech Theatre. Jack. Are you going to unmute Jack? Where are you? Jack? 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 I don't think he's here. Oh, <laughs> Jack failed. Oh. oh, well, okay. So Jack, Jack's question, I'll do it, is uh, what made you want to begin a career in acting? Oh, ah, diving right in. Oh, God, what is it? You know, I don't know about a definitive moment. Um, my parents tell the story of how I used to watch TV and be like, excuse me, how do I climb in there and get in there with them? Uh, I don't remember doing that though. <laughs> um, I, think, I think I was attracted to all things performance. Like ever since a young age, I would go, I was such a little weirdo. I would go to the gymnastics club just to watch, which is creepy, but I was a child. So it's not that creepy. <laughs> um, and like, I don't know. I just, I, I, I loved dancing and, and acting and singing and all of those things. And so as I started to dabble in them in school, I kind of learned that acting was the one I was most attracted to. And I like, also, I like the feeling of kind of uh, losing myself a little bit. Um, I think it's the same reason that people love to get drunk. <laughs> it's, you know, you, you escape yourself for a little while and that, and, and I have like license to be all of these things that I'm not and it just sort of feels like a nice, it's a nice feeling. Great. Next question, which that was Jack's question from Tech Theatre. Sorry, Jack. It's now <laughs> Beth, Bethany. Beth, up to you. Hi. Over to you. Hello. Um, my question is, what are your memories of college and what was Scott like as a teacher? <laughs> memories! Uh, oh god, so many memories! Um, I mean, so I was 16 when I came to Telford um, Pass. I can't, it's weird to not call it Telford. Um, and I, I had the time of my life. It was one of the best years of my entire life. Um, I just escaped Inverness and I came to this college and met so many amazing people, but like the, we were just so lucky in having Scott as a tutor because not all tutors are like Scott. I can safely say that he has a level of passion and commitment that is so far beyond so many other tutors that I've come across in my time. Um, and so it sort of turned into this really amazing bonding experience where, you know, we all, went on trips together and we went through these, you know, and a lot of difficult training and, and you know, you can be quite tough on us, but it's brilliant because, you, you know, Scott gets the best out of all of us and we all just sort of, that passion was really contagious and sort of trickled down through all the students. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> I'll, give you the, I'll give you the money later. Um, <laughs> Emily from BA Dance. Emily, you've got the next question. Hi. Hello. Um, so our question was, what was your first steps after leaving college? 
what was my first step? Yeah, like yeah. what did you like do when you first left like education? Um, well, when I first left uh, college, I went to drama school in London, but lasted about two months <laughs> and then dropped out because, you know, it was funny. I didn't value that education as much as I did the education from Scott. And it was good education, but it didn't feel like a safe, creative atmosphere where I could really express myself like it felt quite judgmental and so that didn't feel good and also um I booked a job in Scotland on a detective drama called Rebus which was only <laughs> eight days of filming and I was like I've made it <laughs> and so I was like I'm gonna leave uh, so did that and then I was not working as an actress and working in a pub in London and I remember thinking, okay, I'm going to need to figure this out now. Like, I'm out of education. I've done one job that really hasn't led to anything, even though it was a good experience. And so I was working in a pub in London, and then I was like, okay, I need to figure out what to do. And I think a lot of, everyone here will probably have that moment where you're like, ah, there's nothing happening. What do I do? And so that's when you need to get really creative about how you go about it. And so I was like, okay, I could call around I can try and get an agent because that's really the next step isn't it like get an agent so you can start auditioning for professional work um and so I remember not knowing what to do and then just uh emailing the director of Rebus on the off chance that he would even remember me <laughs> or you know be able to help in some way and he and I did and I was like I'm trying to get representation in London and he was like oh that's so funny I've just been talking to this agent at independent talent group who's just got her own client list and so she's looking for people your age and so it was one of those like weird synchronicity moments where you're like oh that worked out really well and I did not think it would work um but that's how I then got an agent and was able to audition for things. Brilliant thanks your the next question comes from Ewan now that your question's kind of been answered do you want to ask a different question Ewan? Um yeah sure I'll try and find that list what? of questions. Um, <laughs> it's all right, just because it should talked about Italia Conti, so you might want to yeah. listen to this. Uh, oh, God, where is it? Ah, there it is. Okay. Oh. Oh, God, I feel like I was really negative about Italia Conti. It was all really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> okay. it's all right. You weren't there for long. I remember you phoning me saying, should I take this job on Rebus? And I said, who's yeah. in it? And you said, some guy called Ken Stott. Who is a very famous actor, a very good actor. You learn a lot from him. <laughs> yeah, he was amazing. Uh, Brilliant, yeah, actor. Was Brilliant actor. Ewan, have you got your question? Yes, I do. So um, my question is, uh, what's um, your favourite performance that you've ever done? And uh, what performance is the one that you think is the best one that you've ever done? Ah! Oh! I don't know. Um, oh, it's weird to sort of say that about yourself, isn't it? <laughs> uh, there's so many to choose from. No, I'm kidding. Um, I, best performance? It's in something no one will have seen, <laughs> which is a movie called All Creatures Here Below, um, set in Kansas City uh, in America. And it's about a couple who are on the run with a baby. And it was really challenging because the character was mentally challenged and so that was difficult in itself to to know where to pitch that performance and play it with sensitivity and and believability and and so that was just a really sort of delicate uh, tightrope to walk um so yeah i'm pretty proud of that one check it out great oh well, thanks thanks you and um lauren and uh, no sorry jack 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 Duffy. hi hi i'm jack and um, i wanted to know um, how you ended up getting the role on Doctor Who and what was it like making the transition for you? Um, so, so basically, um, to pick up where I left off on the other story where I had gotten this agent in London. So now I was able to audition for things in London. And so that was when I was 19 and I got Doctor Who when I was 21. So there was like two years of trying to get yep. parts in the UK. And I was working a bit but not like crazy. Uh, and then just one day, my agent told me, you've got an audition for Doctor Who. And I was like, oh, whoa, that's insane. That's one of the game changer ones. Um, and I was like, well, it's never gonna happen, but I'll go for it anyway. Yeah. 
And then I remember turning up on the wrong day, which was really embarrassing. But then it was a day early though, so that's good. Um, and then, so I came back the next day and did it with the casting director and a couple of scenes um, in a couple of different accents. I remember Scottish and English. And mm -hmm. then they gave me a recall. And so I went and read at the BBC with Matt Smith, who played the doctor. And yeah. also everyone who was working on the show all the producers, Stephen Moffat, the writer, it was truly terrifying <laughs> because it was quite a small room and they were all just like in this semicircle, and then mm. there was just me like reading and it was like, oh. Um, but actually it went all right because Matt is such a good actor that I was able to kind of zone everyone else out. And it's like, oh, you're really engaging. Um, and so that went really well, even though I was like, like I had like full palm sweats right before it, it was awful. <laughs> um, but it went well in the moment. Um, and then that night I found out that I got it, which was totally crazy and it's never happened before where you find out so quickly, you know. Cool. Hasn't happened. <laughs> Great, thanks a lot, cheers. The, uh, the next question comes from, I'm sorry, this is just switched off, but I'll tell you in a second. Uh, comes uh, from Charlie. Charlie, it's Charlie, you're right, Charlie, because I sent you all the running order, you're so good. That's brilliant, Charlie, thank God you're here. Very welcome. <laughs> uh, hi, so our question was, what are some highlights and lowlights of your time in the industry? Oh, good question. Um, some highlights? I mean, the highlights for me are always doing the actual job, like when you're through hair and makeup in the morning and you're finally on a set and then someone shouts action and then you get to just do what you do but like there's a lot of stuff surrounding it that's not really what you do but like but not to sound like negative because it's all fun but it's just like really nice when everything just goes quiet for a second and then you get to just act opposite someone and um, that's pretty big though um highlights would be uh, I, I really love working on, I really love playing the character of Nebula in uh, the Marvel films. And that was fun, even though the prosthetics are a bit of a challenge emotionally to go through in the morning, it's really fun to play that character. I really, really enjoy it. So actually working on uh, Avengers Endgame was a bit of a highlight, just because it's like, you know, it's, it's really weird because like you're in, like, so the movie is like, it grossed the, the most of all movies of all time, which is a completely insane fact, but it's weird to be in that movie and no one knows that you are. <laughs> it's like a really weird, like... I think they know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like a lot of people don't. They're like, are you the blue thing? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> are you the blue thing? Uh, oh, yeah. Low lights? Low, low lights? lights um, oh, low moments. I mean, I think, you know, this is an industry full of rejection, which everyone will find out no one's exempt from that no matter how good you are you know it's um it's just the way it is and so you get like no 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 yes no 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 yes <laughs> and that's just how it goes and so you kind of just have to roll with those punches and and just not let any self-doubt creep in through those mm -hmm. rejections so that they can be moments of low because you really give your all to something and then they're just like nah um <laughs> but <laughs> but it's worth it it makes the yeses all the more exciting as well okay great and the next one comes from ben ben, I got it. ben hello um uh, my question is, has there been a key moment in your career that you'll never forget? And could you see yourself ever acting on stage again? Ooh, so a key moment I'll never forget uh, in my career. Um, I think a key moment I'll never forget. I mean, probably getting the role on Doctor Who just because I'd gone from complete obscurity to that. And it was like the biggest leap I think I've taken career wise. And it was all like against the odds type of thing. Uh, or at least it felt that way when I was going for the role. I was like, there's no way in hell. So like that felt like a small miracle to me. Uh, and so I was like so grateful um, for that. So that was a highlight that I'll never forget. And then the other question was, do I see myself go back to stage? Yes. I would love to. Yeah, I would love to do that. Um, so I've done one professional 
play, which was uh, at the Donmar warehouse, but my role was really, really small. Uh, I was on stage for about five minutes of a whole show and then had to stick around for the, for the bow at the end, <laughs> uh, which was weird. Um, but yeah, I would love to go back and, and do something a little bit different, maybe something more modern. Um, uh, yeah, I definitely plan to do that at some point. It would also be fun to direct a play as well. I've never done anything like that but it would be nice to kind of create this thing and then let it go off into the theater world. Brilliant. Um, William, thanks. William. Oh, hi. Um, my question is, if you could give one piece of advice to yourself at the start of your career that you know now, what would it be and why? It would probably be, I wish that I could just inject my younger self with the knowledge of acting that I have now compared to then particularly screen acting is what I'm talking about. Um, because I look back on some of my stuff and I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's just, I feel like I've come a long way, I hope anyway. Um, and I think that's maybe a healthy attitude to have as well, like, you know, to not think, oh, I'm great. Although I thought I was good at the time. <laughs> But looking back, it's like, uh, so I would definitely um, teach myself how to act is what I would do. Uh, but in terms of like, how to approach things, sometimes I think that the younger version of me could teach me a thing or two about attitudes towards things, because I feel like I was so fearless back then. And I was like, I felt like I was invincible. Um, and now I'm older and like, m riddled with more anxiety, which comes with age, I think. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Our next Sorry. question comes from one of our makeup artists, uh, we, uh, uh, and it's Henrietta. Where are you? There you are. Uh, where are you, Henrietta? Are you muted? I'm here. Cheers Hi. 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 My question feels so unimportant now. <laughs> but I just wanted to ask, like, what products do you like to use for your skincare routine? Ah, okay. Um, so I like to use this brand called Rejuvi, which I think is... Australian but I'm not sure and you have to order it online and I will use aloe vera healing gel mixed with flavonoid complex <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and then you do that on your face and then put moisturizer of your choice on top of it and I'm telling you this is the key this is the goddamn key <laughs> to all of it <laughs> <laughs> brilliant brilliant thanks uh, Heather from uh, Musical Theatre Heather Hi. My question is, have you ever felt pressure to look or act a certain way, like in the media or the public eye? Good question. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, I think, I think anyone would feel those sorts of pressures. You know, there's, I think just when you, you know, have more people watching what you're doing and your behavior and, and people sort of judging that you can't help but censor certain things and just sort of be aware of that and I remember like when I first started when I was first really in the public I was in a show that a lot of children watched and so that was a little bit on my mind of like let's try not to fall out of this place drunk <laughs> you know <laughs> um but like to look a certain way yeah I think like I probably feel that I don't I don't feel that as bad as I think some people do but uh, I do definitely feel like I need to keep up appearances sometimes um, and yeah if it's like an event or something then yeah I have to dress up don't want to you don't want to feel like some sort of disappointment or something <laughs> um, but no I don't feel those pressures as much now that I've gotten older I think that my personal emphasis on that has really transitioned from physical appearance onto onto creativity actually that's just happened naturally where it's just like no this is that's not what i have to offer the the creative stuff is um and it's a really nice like like burden off of your shoulder to sort of for that to happen that's great that's really lovely to hear um uh, emily's got a we follow up so kind of in your timeline i guess so emily we'll go back to you hello um our question was how did you and um, make the transition to America. How did you find that? Um, so I was in, so I'd finished on Doctor Who by that point and I was, 
And then, oh yeah, so I was in the UK and I was doing a film in Scotland, um, Not Another Happy Ending in Glasgow, which was so much fun. And I had gotten this film, Oculus, which is a horror film about a haunted mirror. And it's better than I just made it sound, by the way. And I, uh, and that show, and that show in uh, Alabama in America, uh, I don't know if you know much about Alabama, but that is like Ameri like Southern America. Um, and so I um, knew that, so they had to get me a visa in order to work over in the States. And so they got me the visa and then I was like, oh, I've got three years on this visa. I'll just go and film the film in Alabama and then I'll just stay, not in Alabama. <laughs> uh, so I was like, okay, I'll move to Los Angeles. I'll just go. And so literally I had, I went to Los Angeles with a suitcase and I didn't have a place to stay. I literally remember getting off the plane and being like, where am I gonna go right now? Uh, so that was a weird time. And then I moved into an apartment that got robbed because it was really dodgy. Because I didn't really know anything about where I was or what areas were good in Los Angeles. And it was, it was like quite intense actually. But I think I was lucky I already had representation over there because of Doctor Who and so, uh, it wasn't like completely, but it was kind of like starting from scratch a little bit as well because they didn't care so much. I mean, people, some people like Doctor Who, but it's not really known so much over there. Uh, Alicia, we've got our next question. Hiya. Hello. Um, my question was, what was your favourite role and why? My favourite role? Um... Mm. This is hard. <laughs> and it's not easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Um, it's either the one I was talking about, all creatures here below, or oh, I don't know, you know, <laughs> Nebula, maybe Nebula. Ne if I could do Nebula without the prosthetics, that would be my favorite role. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie from Dance, thanks. Hiya. Oh, dance. Hello. <laughs> uh, my question is, have you had any knockbacks in your career? If so, how did you deal with them? Did you have any anxiety or nerves for any future projects? Um, I've had millions of knockbacks. <laughs> um, that's the nature of this. If you don't have knockbacks, then if, I mean, I just can't even imagine that. Like it's, I, people are lying if they say they haven't. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's just an industry that, that is consists mainly of rejections because there's so much competition. But then there's just a, a win every so often. And that tends to be how it goes. Um, and that's, that's it. And so that's why it's so vital to go into it with the self-belief. Because that's where it needs to come from. And then everybody else is going to believe in you if you've got that sort of radiating out of you, you know. Um, and so... Yeah, I mean, I've, I, I, I got this job before Doctor Who, actually, that was like a comedy TV show that was in the States, and it was like really exciting. And I did the read through, and then they fired me <laughs> after they heard me read the role. And I was like, it must have been about 20 then. And so it sort of, sort of felt like a little bit of a break for me. Um, and, you know, I, I will say I did something really weird with the role, and so I can understand why they fired me. <laughs> <laughs> like if I'm being totally honest but like at the time it was devastating and I was like is there anything I can do uh, funnily enough Kevin Hart was also in that tv show so but we like never really met or talked so it's really funny that we now work together but um <laughs> but like it was yeah it was difficult to deal with but I understood or <clears throat> certainly understand now where they were coming from with recasting me in the role but at the time it was a huge knockback to hear well, not just that you didn't get the role, but you had the role, but then you were so bad <laughs> that they got rid of you. And so it was like, <laughs> tough to deal with, but I just didn't let it affect my my confidence, you know, like you, you can't, you just have to keep going and not, you know, take your past experiences or negative ones into the future projects. Hey, Anthony, 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 where are you? Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, from your own experience, what are the most common misconceptions about being an actor? Misconceptions? Um, 
I think some people think that you're just going to be like rich and glamorous immediately when you're an actor. <laughs> uh, I mean, certainly like people who don't do acting themselves, I think have this like view of it as a very glamorous job, actually, I would say. But like, I mean, it's not really, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's hard work because of the hours. Like, so for, if you're a girl, you tend to have to get up earlier because you have more hair and makeup than the guys, sad truth. <laughs> um, but you know, so for me, like I'll get up at like, I don't know, uh, five on a, you know, for normal hair and makeup. And then you can work for 20 hours sometimes. Uh, in America, you don't finish at a certain time, you keep going until you finish the material for that day. And so in the UK, you're a bit more protected from that because they have a set finish time at like 7pm or something, and then you're out the door no matter what. Uh, in America, they will keep going until it's finished. So you can go all through the night, uh, which is, is hard going. Um, so I would say that it, that doesn't sound very glamorous. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think of other like misconceptions. I'm not sure. I feel like there's probably a lot that I'm just like not thinking of right now. You can always come back to it. You can always come back to it. I'll throw them in. Think of them. You, you, absolutely fine. So, uh, Reese, I love Reese's question. It's really interesting. Reese. Hello. Um, uh, how long after you left college would you say it took for your career to sort of take off? Um, so I would say, so I was 16, so I must have been 17 when I left. Then I went to Italia Conti, which by the way, I need to say, is good training. <laughs> yeah. The atmosphere I was talking about was more from the other students than it was from the tutors themselves. Like, which is interesting, like, because I think that that really, like, I don't know how you deal with that, if that ever happens in your classes, Scott, but like, I think it's so vital to support one another, even if somebody's up there doing something ridiculous that is so funny, it's it's important to be like, you know, not kind of. Well, I think all the staff uh, in Pass really put an emphasis on people being part of a team. I yeah. think all of us do, it's, you know, I think it's what we're fundamentally about uh, in all the areas of Pass, I think it's, really really important and would, would I think all my colleagues would agree with me anyway um, well, that's it, you know and I think great. it is like on the tutors to like recognize if that's not happening within their no class. absolutely yeah. we're gonna be tough about that you're right yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying anyway. to <laughs> but that uh, wasn't your question at all uh, your question it, was how long did it take it took yeah. Uh, to get famous there was what she was gonna say how long did it take to become famous until you thought you were famous I don't think I'm famous yet. <laughs> I don't. You are. You well, are. I, I don't know though. Like I can still go for coffee, honestly. I mean, I don't know though. I think I'm just like not famous compared to the people I work with, which are the rock. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I'm not famous compared to, to him. Um, but like, anyway, so it took, I mean, until I, I mean, I was working as an actress um, from about, 19 onwards and I left Telford at 17 but really I wasn't sort of known until I was like 21 uh, on Doctor Who so that would have been four years. Oh, that's good. Four years Great. Um, let's get Ryan has got a question which I think is another interesting one. Ryan. Hi. Uh, my question is how uh, if someone was going to make your life into a movie who would you get to play you and why? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Uh, obviously someone from past. <laughs> I'll be good holding auditions <laughs> for all the gingers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would get, I don't know. So, you know, I, it always really annoys me when people get Scottish roles that aren't Scottish. And I know that's silly because people can just put on accents. But I just know that there's such an such amazing talent in our country that it's like come on let's hear some of those real accents um so i would definitely want someone scottish um i don't know it'd be cool to get a, an unknown to do it i mean that's not a very fun answer uh who else who's really known i don't know who would you cast ryan who would you cast as you mm. <laughs> yes, <we can. laughs> 
I don't know. That is <laughs> We can we can ask we can ask people who that might be by the end of the interview. We'll have we'll have a general idea of who might be who would be good to play Karen. <laughs> uh, so next question goes to Joe. Joe Hunter. Hi there. Hello. Uh, so our question is, as someone who has written, directed and starred in their own films, what advice would you give to someone who is interested in devising and performing in their own work? Ah, good question. I would say, I mean, because, okay, so because I was in the project as an actress uh, that I was directing, um, it was important to have some sort of outside uh, some eyes uh, on it because you can't really view the whole thing in its entirety from the inside um, and so and there are pros and cons to that so like you know I had this producer Mally on my film who just really kind of would give me the thumbs up or the thumbs down like so I could look to her and know whether we had it or not we had the right take uh, and she was just a good perspective for me to have um, but also the pros of being in it were that I could interact with the other actors that I wanted to direct. But instead of being like, oh, let's have a conversation about this. I was more able to be like, okay, just respond to whatever I'm going to give you as an actor. So all they had to do was really be like really, really present. And then if I wanted them to be angry, I could just like prod them from inside the scene a little bit and just get this kind of really natural reaction, which is so, which was really important to me for that film to just make it feel real and uh yeah and we had a lot of like fun runs as well i remember so like i would this is something i always do as an actress as well i'm going off topic here but uh so i'll do the scene um the way it's written um and the director wants it and then once we feel that that's sort of done and we've got it i'll be like can i have a fun run where you're not allowed to give me any notes <laughs> and i can do whatever i want uh, and there's no rules to fun runs that's the fun of it so like you can say whatever you want do whatever you want and it's like a complete surprise and sometimes like something brilliant will come out of that that never would have happened and so because i love doing that so much i did that a lot in my film when i was directing it and i was like don't worry about the words just say it in your own words whatever um and the film is mainly uh, made up of the fun runs because the performances, like something happens to the actor where the actor is like, ah, okay, we've got it, it's done now. Now this is just like a silly fun one. And uh, and then, yeah, it's just really interesting stuff comes out of it. Ah, fine, that's great. I really enjoyed your film, it's great. Um, <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Hello. Hello. So I'm, our question was, what would you say is the hardest thing you'd have to adapt to in the industry that you didn't think would be an issue going in? Hardest thing to adapt to? The hours are long. I've talked about that already. Um, but, but it's fun too. So like time does fly when you are having fun. But like there's one thing about acting, if you're not the lead role in the project, I'm talking about screen stuff specifically, you there's a lot of waiting around actually like you can be in your trailer all day and then they can come in and be like okay we're actually not going to get to your scene so you you can go home <laughs> and it's just like a really like so there's a lot of um waiting involved sometimes depending on what your role is uh, and then on the other side of that if you are sort of the lead for instance it can be really really strenuous i remember doing this um tv show in the states on on network television uh, so it was like a sort of 22 episode season type of thing. Uh, and it's interesting working in American television because that was my one and only experience of it. But you, um, you're constantly living in fear that the TV show is going to get cancelled at any given moment, uh, because that's how it works more so over there than in the UK where they would like film a whole series and then air it. Uh, and it's like six episodes over there. It's like 20 something episodes and you're they're airing as you're filming and you're checking the ratings and if they go down you're probably going to get a call that you're not coming into work tomorrow and so it's this really like uncertain interesting weird experience um and that was strenuous i would say like being being the lead female on an american sitcom is the most strenuous of any acting job 
<laughs> because it's like a lot of dialogue every day. So, and then you work 15 hours a day, go home, you've got to learn lines for two hours, and then you need to be asleep in order to get enough sleep and then back up at five, you know? Oh, that's, that's quite something. Um, Fiona, uh, who wrote some of the best questions, by the way? I could have chosen all of Fiona's questions. I have to say that, Fiona. I love your <laughs> questions. She's got another one later, which is my favourite. Anyway, Fiona. Um, yeah, there were a mixture of mine and Becca's questions. So this okay. one is from Becca from the VA. She says, hi, and hopes you're keeping safe. Oh. Um, she says, you've had roles in Doctor Who, the MCU, and Jumanji. How do you prepare for coming into an already globally known franchise? Uh, God, yeah, that's an interesting... Whoa, some music. What's that? That was amazing. Um, so how do you prepare for that? Uh, honestly, just like any other job is the truth of it. Like, I think that it would be probably detrimental to dwell on the fact that it's already beloved uh, and people are already so passionate about it. And maybe you can get excited by that and use it as positive fuel to make sure that you do a good job for these people who love this thing already. But like, to be sort of to let it make you nervous or, or be intimidated is, isn't a good approach for yourself, I would say. Uh, and so for me, I, I've just approached it like any job, really. It's like, who is this character? How do I play this with some truth? Uh, and, and that's about it, really. Great. Thank you. And uh, Rachel uh, is one of our makeup artists. And it's a good question because I know you work with makeup artists quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel, where are you? Hi, I'm actually going to change my question. I hope Scott doesn't hate me for this. Um, but you briefly no, I, spoke about... I don't mind. <laughs> you briefly spoke about uh, getting into your makeup for Nebula. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, so uh, that involves, sometimes I have to set my alarm for 2 a.m. Just wanted a reaction from that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard uh, no but it's uh it's so I, I get up really early and then I'll go into work and they will so essentially it's all it's all prosthetics and so it's like a second skin that's stuck onto your skin glued on and so they will begin with my neck <laughs> And they'll put a neck on, so I'm like wearing this collar type thing, and then uh, and then they put my face on, which has a little chin implant. Apparently, Nebula is meant to have a pointier face than my moon head, and then and then it goes up to here, and then there's like another piece that sort of goes around the eye and is stuck on. Oh yeah, and I have a bald cap as well, uh, so that needs to be done before all of this, um, and then they stick on the rest of my head, and then I'm completely enclosed in the makeup, and that's it the day. Oh, bloody hell. That's a good, good one. Um, but I would ask her questions. I think it was quite a good one. <laughs> what for you as an actor makes an outstanding makeup artist? Mm. I think it's a really good question for all our makeup artists. Um, <clears throat> makeup artists on film sets. I'm mm. not sure about for men because I've I'm not a man, <laughs> but also they have less time generally uh, in the makeup chair as, as women. Um, and so what sort of ends up happening a lot of the time is that makeup artists can become a real source of emotional support for the actress. <laughs> uh, and so it's not just um, putting the makeup on, it's like talking about this and you're talking about a lot of stuff um, because, you know, it's quite an intense experience to like go on location, move your whole life and, and, and make a, a film and you're together all the time. Uh, more so than anyone, I would say, is the actress and the makeup artist. And so there's that side to it. And then also a good makeup artist, I, I would say one that's willing to make you as an actress feel your best, like a some makeup artists may be like, no, it has to be like this. And then the actress doesn't feel as comfortable as they could because maybe they're insecure about a certain feature or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think a good makeup artist would be able to pick up on that and, and, and really kind of know how to make the actress look her best, but also like feel her best. Um, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Gregor. Hi, Karen. Um, so I really enjoyed uh, the parties just beginning. 
Oh, thanks. And so my question was, uh, do you have any future plans for any directing projects or any writing projects? Yes. Yeah, so I've got loads of plans, actually, because we're in lockdown and it's all I can do. So um, I, so I, since that film, I made another short film set in a hoarder's house and it's a horror film. Uh, and that is, so we're working on a feature version of that right now. Um, and also I'm making another, I'm writing another script based on another short film I made called Conventional, which is on YouTube if you're in any way interested. And it uh, is about an actress on the convention circuit uh, having starred in a horror film like 20 years ago um, and it is pretty dark but hopefully funny as well and so I'm so I'm almost finished that script we're writing the outline for the horror film set in the hoarder's house and also I have a lot of other things in development I start you know what I've started doing I've started allocating jobs to other people so I'll be like instead of like oh I'm gonna write this whole script myself I've started to look for writers that I like and I've been like I have this idea can you write this for me and uh, you know if there's a role that I think is cool from history I'll find a writer and be like can you write this script for me to act in and so it feels really nice to be at the stage where I can be really proactive uh, and sort of um, steer my own career and go in the direction that I want to rather than waiting to see what sort of lands in front of me. Great. Um, Maddie, because we've had uh, Alicia's question already, so uh, Maddie. Hiya. Hi. So my question was, could you explain some of the differences between acting in blockbuster films compared to independent ones? Yeah. Um, so so the, the difference is everything. So basically, it's weird. Like when you hear action and then you have to go, it feels exactly the same. Like there's no, no real difference between the blockbusters and the, the smaller indies because really you're just playing a character opposite other people playing characters and you're trying to make it real and truthful and believable. Um, so, so it's kind of the same other than maybe some technical aspects in the blockbusters where maybe you are running away from a monster that's not there or you're on a green screen and they're like, oh, this is a destroyed planet. And you're like, okay, <laughs> uh, there's a lot to sort of imagine there. Um, but that would be the main difference, I would say. But then in terms of everything surrounding that, that's probably where the main differences lie is like on an indie film, like all creatures here below, the one I was talking about, you know, we weren't even sure if we were gonna have like any trailers, you know, it, it, there was no, you know, nice spread of food like they have on the blockbusters. And, and, you know, it was really sort of, the budget was so small that we would have to film so much in a day. We were like racing to get everything done. And that basically results in not a lot of takes for the actors. Um, so that was a big difference. Whereas on, on the Marvel films, you know, where they have a large budget, they can pamper you a little bit uh, with the food <laughs> and also um, then just give you a lot of takes because there's the time and money. Oh, Scott's been muted. Or did I mute it? No, I don't know how you got muted there, but I'm not now. Charlie, you've got the next question. Hello, it's me again. Um, <laughs> So another question that we got was, what's your view on the current film industry and how does it feel being a part of that industry? What's my view on the current film industry? Yeah, and how does it feel to be a part of it? Um, it feels really exciting. I love films and I love the film industry um, and I think it's all really exciting. Like I'll still get really excited if I see something being filmed on the street. I'll be like, what's going on? Because <laughs> it's just like, it's always just so exciting, you know? Um, so I feel really uh, privileged and excited to be a part of it. Um, and it feels really exciting to be diving into more of behind the camera stuff. Um, it's pretty cool to see how everything is actually done and made. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be able to do anything else. I have zero skills in other areas. Hey. Um Actually, I don't think Jill's here, is she? Jill? No, she's not. Um, so, Leah, have you got a question? Uh, Ewan's going to ask our question. That's for you. Okay, that's great. Ewan. Hi. 
So our original question was kind of already answered. <laughs> but um, my new one was, your favourite makeup look you've had done for a movie or TV show? Favourite makeup look? Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know, you know. I would say... Favourite makeup look? It was fun to go... I keep talking about all creatures here below. I feel like I need to either do more projects or <laughs> something. <laughs> but I like that makeup look because it was really um, not glamorous at all. And so it really felt like, you know, it just, there's like a pressure off when you're meant to look awful. <laughs> and so, you know, I had like these big bushy eyebrows. We did like, we did no foundation, but we put on this sun block that was just quite greasy looking and so it looked really kind of um just not not great and any blemishes we just like left out like they so you could see them uh bags under the eyes was good um and that was just fun because it felt quite different because up until that point I'd been in things generally where you're they're trying to just make you look your best uh and so that felt like a fun departure um for Jumanji, I, I thought that that makeup look was really, really lovely. I, I liked that whole thing. Uh, it was hard work though, because I'm so pale that they had to do a full body tan every single morning. Uh, because, <laughs> so this is an interesting thing for makeup artists to think about. So we're filming in Hawaii, which is amazing. We're in the deep jungle. And so there's mosquitoes everywhere and there's sun blasting down. So you have to put, and I am wearing a costume where a lot of skin is exposed. So you have to put a uh, bug repellent on and then you have to put sunscreen on and then you have to put a full body tan on, but the um, bug repellent strips the tan off. And so they were just like constantly contending, trying to make it look vaguely decent. And yeah, it was a full nightmare for the makeup artist. Like they, they didn't know what to do. There was no way to sort of make it even and. So that can be one of the challenges for the makeup department. <laughs> Thank you. Sarah? Uh, hello again. So uh, one of our questions was, how did you make money when you couldn't find acting jobs? I know you mentioned working in a pub, but is, what else did you do just kind of in between jobs? Um, so, yeah, so I guess I've worked in loads of places. When I was living in Edinburgh at Telford, I worked in Sainsbury's on the um, cheese deli. So I did that. I think I did that to get enough money to be able to go to Romania, I think. Something like that. Uh, and then I um, worked in a pub in London. And then I, so I was working in the pub. And then I tried to audition for the London Dungeon uh, <laughs> to be an actor there, which was really fun actually. But like I turned up on my first day thinking it was like an induction and they put me in a costume and they went, and go. And I was like, what? I don't know any of the lines. I don't know how to do a Cockney accent for the pie woman from Sweeney Todd. <laughs> um, and so that was really scary. And I didn't go back after that. That was my one day there. And uh, I, so yeah, I did that for money. And then I started to do a little bit of modeling uh, more on the commercial side rather than the high fashion. And so I did that and that gave me a little bit of money to get by but not too much. Um, so no, I was never rolling in it. Fiona. Hello again. Um, another question we had was, if you were a chair, which celebrity would you let sit on you? <laughs> <laughs> My favourite question. <laughs> My favourite question of all time. Um, <laughs> I would chair. I would like <laughs> sit on you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I might have Jennifer Lawrence. I get Jennifer Lawrence to sit on me because I maybe some of her talent would rub off on me. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Gregor. Uh, hi again. Um, hi. So uh, my next question was, uh, was there a character in college that you played that you found particularly memorable and why? <laughs> I'm now getting all these memories of like I stepped in for someone in college I remember um a girl maybe got ill or something I don't remember but she dropped out of um this play where she was playing a very like brash Yorkshire 
woman. And so I stepped in <laughs> and did the most insane Yorkshire accent of all time. Um, and I remember I had a fat suit on as well, <laughs> which was funny because my legs were out. So there was just these like little spindly legs sticking out the bottom. It was truly a sight to behold. But I remember loving that character uh, just because she was so kind of big and you could just let loose with her. Uh, and the guy I was acting with was amazing. That was your mum's favourite, that was your mother's favourite role you did at college. That's I remember my favourite role I've ever done, ever. <laughs> it was Mama Mason and View from the Boundary, I remember it well. <laughs> it's really bizarre that I just remembered that now. Yeah, that's wild. But I remember your mum said she really loved that part. Oh yeah, that was a hit with my parents, they loved it. <laughs> uh, uh, Emily. Emily, Emily. Hi again. Hi. Um, we were wondering what your best tips for auditions are. Ah, yeah. Okay. So I really like auditions, um, but sometimes I, I get like really nervous before them too. So like I, you know, fully like heart going, like, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I'm so used to it now that it's sort of just become part of the process. But like, I would like that not to be there, but it's there. And so I'm accepting it. But like when you go in, I would say the main thing that I would, the main way I, I personally like to approach auditions is that, is, is like to just change the power dynamic a little bit, like, and not in an intentional like way where you're like acting in a certain way, but it's more just like how you're feeling inside. So if you go in and you're like, I really need to impress these people and do what they want me to do, and then they'll hire me. I think that you might end up kind of just maybe, oh, I don't know how to describe this. Basically, the way I, I like to feel when I go in is that this is my time and I, how can you help me do what I need to do in this moment? Um, and so if you look at it like that, then they're there to support you and give you what you need because you are the expert in the field. That's why they're looking for someone to do it. And it's so it's like, so it's like, you know, just kind of like taking responsibility for it and like and a sense of ownership over like, this is, this is my time. And, and so that sort of just changes your sort of inner power dynamic of like, okay, now I'm not trying eager to please. I'm more just like trying to figure this out for myself and work with the creative people in front of me. Does that Wait. feel like no, that makes absolute sense. I mean, it's yeah. that brilliant sense. Jack. Uh, not Jack. He's not here. So uh, we got to the end of the, the not, not that Jack. Jack Duffy, of course, is here. How could we not be here? Uh, 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 Fiona, do you want a, you got some? Do you want, you got a question? And I'll just anybody who wants a question, just put their hand up, and I will go to you next. Okay. So Fiona. Oh, another one. Yeah, you've got a list. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I was only prepared for the two questions, Scott. Oh, well, I'll ask, a little bit more time. I'll ask Jill's question since she couldn't make it. Um, Jill said, "Is there anything that surprised you about um, being an actor that you didn't expect beforehand?" Hmm. Did, was there anything that surprised me? I think when I first went onto a set ever in my life, which was the Rebus job I didn't know what was happening at all like I didn't know any of the language that was used on a film set which is there's like a whole vocabulary that I had just, I never heard the words before I don't know what like speed like they, there's lo lots of words like uh like when sound is rolling they'll say like speed and then and there's like a certain certain like order of words and then there's action and so I didn't really know what was happening I knew what action meant and that was about it and so I would be I was quite flustered and I was a bit like because they would be like okay let's just uh, go from that line in the scene uh, and we'll take it to the end and I'm like wait what do you mean what line like we're not going from the beginning like I just remember being like whoa they're moving so fast and I need someone to explain what's happening to me um but uh so that was kind of weird um I feel like they should give like people who are just starting out a little crash course on on the words that are going to be used. It's quite helpful. <laughs> who's got a que who's got a question now? Then just uh, okay, William. Then uh, Jordan. 
Hi. Um, you've mentioned about doing writing and directing. Um, what advice would you give to those who wish to also widen their variety of skills within the arts? I think it's a great idea to do that. I think it gives you such an understanding of your original field and also just like what everybody else is doing around you. Because there's so many people that work on a film set other than the actors. There's just so many people uh, that do all sorts of different jobs. And so I think it's really valuable to learn what all of those are and what goes into making a film. And that can really be helped by, you know, uh, writing your own stuff and directing your own stuff. And like, and theater too, you know, it's, it's the same. I feel like I'm talking about screen a lot, and not a lot of theater, but like, I mean, I think as an actor, it really helps your understanding of acting as well, uh, to, to look at it from a different perspective. Uh, for me, I feel like I'm easier to work with as an actress now that I've directed, because I'm like, oh, I see what, what you need from me here. And I also just really understand how completely uh, necessary it is to support the director's vision, because it is their vision and we are there to help the director achieve that. And within, our, within the realm of what we do, we can push back on things and ask questions, but really ultimately you have to support that overall vision for it to have a, you know, an original sense of identity to the whole thing. Yeah, thanks, that's great, thanks William. Uh, Jordan. Hi, um, I was just gonna ask, a, you work on a large scale of different projects, some of them being the indie films and some of them being the large scale films. How do you deal with the pressures or do you find that the pressures of the big films affect your enjoyment of doing the acting? The pressures of the big films? Um, you know, other than sort of being maybe a little bit nervous because of, of my awareness of how big the film was when I did the first Marvel film, for instance, there isn't, there isn't too much pressure other than the initial kind of like, ah, what am I stepping into? This thing feels gigantic. Um, but I think quickly you realize that the job is the same, um, whether you're making a student film or a blockbuster, like at the end of the day, someone's going to say action and you're going to have to do your lines as well as you can. Uh, and so therefore, I do think a lot of that pressure dissipates. Uh, quite quickly, uh, because you humans just adapt really quickly to things as well, I think. Uh, and so you're just kind of doing your job. And, and so maybe when you're doing the press junkets and things, that is, can be, you know, there can be some pressure there because you are flying to Asia or, you know, to the other side of the planet and you're jet lagged and then people say, okay, we're going to do 40 interviews in a row now. Um, and you're in a room <laughs> and you're like, oh my God, what am I even saying anymore? I don't know. Uh, that stuff can be a little bit challenging. Um, but also it, I, I kind of enjoy it just because I love traveling so much. Okay. Who's got a question? Let me know. Okay, Beth, then you in, then Charlie, then Sarah. And that'll be Hi. probably enough. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Um, since there's maybe an opportunity for maybe it was Beth. It was Beth to start with. Beth oh, to start sorry, with. Sorry, Beth. Beth. You've <laughs> had a couple. <laughs> um, I was just wondering what you like to do in your spare time when you're not acting. Ah. Um. Okay. I'm really boring because when I'm not acting, I'm writing. And so it's all like geared towards the same thing, really, which is like I'm writing stuff that I can then act. <laughs> um, and I don't actually have a great deal of hobbies outside of filmmaking. God, I must do some stuff. Sometimes I'll have wine. <laughs> Sometimes I do that. Uh, That's a hobby, yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, wait, I'm, I, you know what I am? Okay, so I like reading essays about psychology. That's a passion of mine. I love it so much and yes it does help acting but also it's just a fun hobby for me but and secondly I like uh like uh, apps and stuff like I like watching interviews with people who've created social networks and apps and, and cool businesses uh entrepreneur sort of stuff um I, I like watching interviews with them great was it Char did, did, who does say was Charlie next Charlie Uh, so we had another question uh, about your writing and directing career. 
Uh, was that something that you planned on doing when you started your career or was it something that you came across after you began acting? Um, so it's definitely something that I, well, not definitely. It, I always thought I would be an actress and I didn't think, oh, I'm going to be a director. Um, so that sort of realization came a little bit later uh, when I'm probably when I moved to America and I was like, you know, and people in America are very, um, or in, in Los Angeles, are very self-generating. Like you've got, and they're all like multi-hyphenates as well. So they're like, oh yeah, I'm a, a comedian and a presenter and I'm an actor and I'm a writer. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, okay. Um, but there's something sort of inspiring about being around that because everybody's just creating their own stuff. <laughs> Tons of women are, are, are making films and, and or, you know, they're maybe like smaller in scale, but it's just cool to be around. And so I think I was heavily influenced by the people I was around in this town. Uh, but I'd already started writing a little bit before that. So that kind of gave me the push to be the director of the film. Um, but if I look back in my childhood, it was kind of always there because my parents gave me this video camera when I was about 12 or something or earlier and I would make horror films all the time and I would like murder my dad in the films this is a knife <laughs> and he would let me put ketchup everywhere um we have a good relationship by the way this isn't like <laughs> some therapy I need to work through um but like it's uh yeah so like I've got these films that I used to make and so I think the the desire was always there and then it just came out a little bit later brilliant great who is next was it who is was it sarah or who was who's next anthony and then sarah anthony and then sarah hello um okay so it's the end of the world and you're allowed a full course meal what are you choosing for your starter your main and your dessert <laughs> end of the world okay starter will be oh you know oh my god i don't know what are my favorite pizza starter is pizza <laughs> so i'll have a full margarita pizza from kirsty's chip shop in inverness scotland for my starter <laughs> and then i will have for my main i will have what's my favorite food pasta pasta from italy uh, like fresh pasta, real pasta, okay. with just olive oil on it and just simple and clean. And then for my dessert, I will have American pancakes, lemon and ricotta. Nice. Very good. Oh, very good. Lemon and ricotta. <laughs> How lovely. Uh, Sarah? I feel like my question's really boring compared to that one, but um, <laughs> what do you think were some of the best decisions of your career? Oh, best decisions? Oh, um, I would say that moment I was talking about where I was working in the pub and I didn't know what to do and I decided to uh, call that director because that was such a pivotal decision for me because had I not done that, everything after that wouldn't have gone the way that it did. So it's like, I think it's those moments where, you know, like, um, what's the saying? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. Like you have to, when you're backed into a corner and there's no clear route forward, you've got to really think outside the box and be like, you know, and, and be willing to maybe be a little bit annoying to people, persevere, be like, hey, it's me again. <laughs> um, and just really kind of put yourself out there and uh, yeah, just make it happen for yourself because everything else will follow. We've got time for two more questions. Is there a guy in the red that tried to ask before? Okay, right. Well, okay, that, we'll do that. So who else has questions? Uh, Henrietta had a question. Who else? Charlie. Who else? To look on the second screen. Who else? And Ben. And that'll be it. Okay? Uh, or, or, unless any of the staff want to ask a question which would be well, it's fair to ask my colleagues if they want to be asked. So that's the order. Uh, we start, who did I say? Henrietta was first. Uh, did I say, yeah, okay. My question is, do you have a favorite actor to work with? Ooh, a favorite actor. Or actress, I mean, yeah, so either. I think I'm gonna go with Jack Black. <laughs> he's so funny honestly and he's such a good actor too oh my god like 
and, and his physical comedy is just off the charts. And he commits 100% all the time, even when he's off camera. Because, like, obviously when you're filming, you know, you're going to film one side, one person, and then they're going to turn everything around onto the other person. And sometimes actors can get a little lazy when they're not on camera and they're just there for the lines for the other actor. And But he is just committed. He's, like, giving everything he's got. And it's sort of just... Amazing, and he's just a master at comedy, so I, that is my dog barking a lot. Sorry. <laughs> I was wondering if somebody's making strange noises, but it's your dog. Great. My dog, yeah, they're delivering some equi mic equipment because I'm going to do some sort of project where I just record my voice and then they're going to make it into some sort of TV show, and I don't know what it is. Okay, go. Good. Who is next? Oh, again. Darling, darling, darling. <laughs> Um, do you have any movie or TV recommendations to watch during quarantine? Yes, I do. Too Hot to Handle on Netflix. <laughs> Has anyone seen it? <laughs> 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 Wonderful <laughs> reality <laughs> show. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, TV film recommendations. I just started Fargo, actually, in TV world, which I hadn't seen before with Martin Freeman in it. Really, really good acting. Loved all the acting. What I love about that pilot also is that like all the small roles are brilliant, brilliantly acted. Like it, like all of them are like amazing characters and quirky and weird in a sort of Coen Brothers way. Uh, I've been. Um, have you guys seen Parasite yet? Uh, some of you I've have. Some, yeah. I know you that Joey see see it. He loves it. Oh, Joey loves brilliant. that film. Yeah, it's it's one of the best things I've seen in such a long time. Uh, and so now I'm starting to go back and watch more of that director's films. And I just watched one called Mother, which is extraordinary. This guy is, I, I think, the best working director in, in the world right now. Brilliant. Okay, Ben. Hi, sorry, guy in the red shirt here. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, so there's maybe some speculation that there's an all-female Avengers cast movie going on. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to see that happen? And if so, who do you think would lead it? Uh, yeah, I would love to see that happen. Um, they, had, uh, uh, they did like a big Marvel class photo a few years back, yeah. a few years ago where like everyone got together that's ever been in a Marvel film or directed a Marvel film and they did a big picture, but then they threw a party for everyone and all of the girls got together and everyone was like, let's go to Ken <laughs> Feige, the head of Marvel and be like, all female Avengers movie. Uh, so everyone cornered him and he nodded. So I'm taking that as a fool, yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what's happening, but like, I think it would be really cool uh, to see to see that, and there's so many amazing female characters. It'd be cool to see Captain Marvel lead it too, because I thought that she, she just like seems like a cool leader. Okay, Thank you. okay listen, uh, Clara, Eth, Lucy, you've got anything you want to ask? No, they're gonna be, they're gonna be good. Eth, no, that's really strange. But both of them, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I, I was just like, I would just like to say thank you very much for taking this time to speak to our students it's of really course, really thank valuable you. we're oh. very 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 fortunate and um, you know to have you as our patron so thank you very much yeah thank oh, you yeah. thank you i'm always happy to do this uh, as we just want you to come over this next time you're in scotland and i know you have tried but we would really want you to come and see us all uh, awesome. everybody's really keen to see you and meet you I, know, uh, I want but, to come and watch a performance. That's what, that's I, want. what I want. I want you to come and watch a performance too. We'd love yeah. you to. And I, you, you're going to, I've spoken to Karen about a long time and she's going to help a little bit with that for us, aren't you? going to try and. Yeah. Just, uh, it's going to be exciting sure. because it's going to be screen acting. So it's, she's very excited like, about yeah. that. So it's great. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get maybe get you to tweet something about that because you get followed by loads of people. Can I just say on behalf of everybody at PASS, uh thank you for coming today thank you karen look after yourself everybody stay safe and we shall uh we, we shall we'll see you online at some point soon take <laughs> yeah. care have a great weekend thanks Cheers. everyone bye 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 bye, bye, karen. bye, bye, bye.